Hello, everyone who's ever is out there yet. Don't feel confused if you feel like your teacher has changed. I think you may be onto something there. Uh, I will introduce myself in good time, don't worry. Let's see. If you are in the room already and you are just waiting for everyone to get going, um, I will introduce myself shortly, um, but we are going to begin with a fun little, um, well, this, just check that you can access this link and uh, quiz here. It's a little fun thing that we're going to try and do at the beginning if it works. Okay, I think I see some names popping up. Welcome to Daniel Robetswe, if I'm saying it correctly, to Harry. If you could just give me a little thumbs up in the chat to let me know that you are people and not bots, that would be awesome. Oh, welcome, Robetswe. I can see. Am I saying it right, Robetswe? Or am I getting <laughs> close but no cigar? <laughs> Okay, so Harry's, I can see Harry's thumbs up. Welcome, Harry. While we, um, while we wait, Harry, for everyone to join, um, I will introduce myself to everyone once more, most of the learners are in. But if you could, uh, hopefully you can see the page which says joinmyquiz.com. If you can just check if you can open up another tab and put that number in and see if it's working. That would be awesome. Uh, Robert, so yeah, I think so. The, if you are able to get in and do it, absolutely, please give it a go. It might make a little bit of noise, and so you may want to turn the noise down on the quiz tool so that you can still hear me. But please, yeah, go right ahead. Uh, the first question should look something like this: uh, the distance formula. But um, please, yeah, while we wait, let's not waste any time. Uh, and that would be awesome. And then I'll just wait to welcome everyone and give a little introduction shortly. Anybody else who is arriving, just give me a little thumbs up in the chat so I can get a sense of who is here. I do see people on the left hand side. And if you are worried that your teacher has changed form, you are quite correct <laughs> and i will explain in a little bit but you're not you're not seeing wrong so that's all good and yeah welcome to sikhle sinakhla and nosisa nosisa nawazi welcome to nawazi nazole maya kaklekho oh we got lots of people joining us don't be worried if you <laughs> are wondering what happened to your normal teacher. I will explain. Um, welcome to Zian. 
so as I'm sure you're familiar with, I'm someone a little bit new and I'm just taking the lesson for today, but I'd love to know where the students are from in South Africa. I'm in Cape Town, South Africa, in a place called Benshuk. Don't know if you've heard of it. Um, and I'd love to know what area you're from in South Africa. If you're, I assume you're in South Africa. If you could just pop that in the chat, that would be awesome. And then I'll tell you a little bit about me before we get going. Mitchell's Plain, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, you're not too far away. Pretoria North. Plettenberg Bay, yes, I've been to. Oh, we're all over the place. Pretoria North. Teresa Park. Kempton Park, yes. My favorite comedian, Skull Brits. Isn't there KZN Kwamambi? <laughs> Probably messed that up. Awesome. It's so nice that we have Heidelberg, Gauteng. That is awesome. There's a Heidelberg in Cape Town as well. Joburg. So a bit of KZN, main Cape Town and Joburg. Anyone from the Eastern Cape or Free State in the house? Okay, so while we wait a few more people to join, um, if I could ask, I want to get going in about two or three minutes properly, but I know that at the beginning of your lessons, um, you do a sort of a, a do now um, thing. And before I introduce myself properly, I'd love for you to try and go to this quiz. So um, it's just a fun thing that we're trying. And if it doesn't work, you know, that's fine. But you basically open up a browser and you go to joinmyquiz.com and then you enter that code and then you should get three simple questions that look a bit like this and you can answer them and see how it goes and I'm going to give you five minutes to do that um, and then I will introduce myself and start the lesson properly but if you could just give it a go that would be fantastic and if you could just give me a thumbs up on the chat if you now have managed to get in once you've managed to get into this join my quiz if you could give it the thumbs up see claire's in the house there we go very nice robert swear oh that's good news so is there okay Okay, if you're just joining us, oh, there, Zian's in the house, Phoebe's in the house, I hope I'm saying that right, and they are getting into the quiz, and so I'm just going to give you five minutes to give us a go, it seems like it's working, if it isn't working, please do tell Tula or me on the chat and we will help, but for now, I'm assuming everybody who is going to be doing this quiz for the first five minutes and then at 10 past, I will introduce myself formally, and then we'll also have a look at these questions um, in a bit more detail. And then if that goes well, we can, we can move into the more um, chunky part of the lesson. Okay, Nawazi is all good. That's great. Excuse me while I bring up my second screen. <laughs> it's always good to have one. And again, if you're having any problems or you're horribly confused, please do pop it in the chat so we know. At the moment, the instructions for the warm-up are on the screen. 
And we just want to give everyone a chance to give that a good go today, something new. It's a lovely sunny day in Cape Town today, which I'm very happy about. Oh, so you're from Cape Town. I am indeed, Phoebe. I will reveal all when we've done the warm-up exercise. It's just nice for everyone, but I will definitely tell you a bit more about me. Um, <laughs> I'm in Fishhook. I call it the Deep South. <laughs> Whale country. Finding it hard to get into the website? Okay, when you're done with the quiz, Harry, um, it's just two more minutes. Uh, I do, I'm going to ask you just to pause for a second. Um, I do have more quizzes, but I'm going to get started with everyone shortly. Anybody else finding it hard to get into the quiz? Me, so okay. So I think so far you can give some feedback at the end of the the lesson, but I think um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on. But thank you so much for taking the time to try something new. Um, whenever we do learning, I think one of my values is that we we're willing to try new things, uh, and so you can report back at the end of the lesson how you found this exercise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the questions that were in the quiz that perhaps. Um, all of you didn't see because of some issues um, on the board, and I will talk to you about them in a moment. Before I do that, I just want to say a bit more about me. Uh, so welcome to everybody in the chat. I am just filling in today for this last lesson on analytical geometry, and I'm someone who was taught high school maths for many years, um, and so I hope to just give you some tips and some general guidance on the section. And we're gonna try and find the areas where you still need support. And then I will take you through, you know, things that I've learned that hopefully will, will help you. Uh, I used to teach at Weinberg um, and I've taught in Tanzania and I've taught all over the, the world. So yeah, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you guys today. Okay, so if we look at these first three questions I basically gave you. Um, basically, are you from Weinberg as well? <laughs> um, all I wanted to do was in this section, analytical geometry, there's some basic, there's knowledge and then there's skills. So you need to have knowledge of different types of things like the distance formula, the midpoint formula, the gradient formula. And then you also need to be able to apply it reliably. If Until you've got the, those skills down, it's very difficult to then move to the other layers of the you know, the section. So I just want quickly to talk about this question over here, question one, question two, and question three. Uh, and I'm just going to show you, in fact, I'll give you two minutes now. If you haven't had a chance to finish the, the quiz or you couldn't do the quiz because of the internet issues, could you try please to do these three questions and then I will give you the answers and then we'll talk about how much support is needed um, and I'll, you know, basically. So if you haven't done this already, if you could please just do that now. Which key can I move that? In fact, you can even just do those two questions. So make sure that you can do those two questions. I'll give you two minutes. And then while um, we're working on that, if there are any other questions from the group that they want to know about me, hit them in the chat and I will respond while people are finishing these two questions. Huh? 
Hi, David. I see you are. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you the answers to these. But before I do that, I just want to show you something um, on the screen and make sure that my writing is working. So I'm just going to turn my tablet on. Hopefully you can see what's on the board. Um, this first question is a distance formula question. And whenever you use the distance formula, you'll notice that it always has this particular structure where you have a square root and then a bracket squared and then a bracket squared. Whenever you are finding the distance between two points, you have that. Now, what I found is very, very you know, useful is inside these brackets, you always have the same thing. You have the change in X and the change in Y. And so I always use the structure whenever I am you know, finding the distance between two points. And then all I do is I go and ask myself, okay, well, what is you know, the difference between the three and the three here, well, three minus three is gonna be zero. So that's the change in X. And then minus nine um, minus four, which is basically gonna be this bit, minus nine minus four is just gonna be minus 13. And so, you know, if I then go, you should find naught squared is naught and then 13 squared is 169. And so the distance should be 13 units. Okay. And for the midpoint, uh, often with the midpoint, the midpoint is actually the easiest because all you do is you add the two X coordinates, you go two plus four and you divide them by two. Um, and then you take the two Y coordinates, which are going to be three plus over two. And if we simplify that, so this becomes six, six over two is three. And then here, three plus minus three is naught. So we should get three zero, which is this one over here. Okay, are there any questions in the chat or are you ready to, to move on? Okay. So in my experience, I'm just going to give you, obviously I've taught this for many years, and the tools that you need to master for this section that you'll come across in the exam questions, and this is what we're going to work on today, are the following. You need to know the distance formula backwards, forwards, everywhere. You need to know how to use the midpoint formula. You need to know how to find the gradient. You need to find um, or work with straight lines. Now, again, if you don't know that yet, that's fine. That's why you're here. Uh, and then something else that you need to know is really that the section is just about the different types. Oh, excuse me. That's a little bit too thick. It's really about the different types of possible relationships between points and lines. So all these things are just about points and lines and you're finding tools to put in your toolkit, hence my funky little picture here. And so you need to know, you know, when do I use a screwdriver? When do I use a spanner for the particular job that you find yourself doing? If you get my analogy. The other thing that I found with experience that students also need to know in the section is triangles and quadrilaterals. And so you need to today, we may need to, brush up a little bit on what are the properties of triangles and quadrilaterals. Now, I would like, before I start the old exam questions, could you please put um, some information or properties or ideas that you know about triangles and quadrilaterals in the chat? So anything that you know about those two shapes that may be relevant for this topic. So I'm going to give you a moment and I want to see the keyboards. I want to see the chat light up. What can you remember from class or what, you know, what do you know about the section 
and triangles and quadrilaterals. I'll give you a moment to, to list that. Quads always have four sides. This is very important. Interior angle of a quadrilateral is 360. Yes, it is. That is important. Do we know anything about different types of triangles? Or different types of quadrilaterals and their properties? Equilateral triangle. Phoebe, how would we know if something is an equilateral triangle, if we were using this toolkit that we have here, what would we be looking out for? All sides are the same length. And what tool would you use? If you look at the uh, right angle triangle has a 90 degree angle. Yes, very much. Scalene triangle, no sides or angles are the same. Totally agree. No, you guys know your stuff. What about the uh, isosceles triangle? What is that and what are we looking out for? Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera here. <laughs> okay. Do we know anything about, um, well, I'll give you a little bit more time and then I'm gonna move into the exam questions. Two angles are the same and one is not. All two sides are the same and one is not. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to give you a little summary before we start the questions. Now, bearing in mind that you, a lot of us may still be battling to actually get the skill, and we need to just keep practicing these things over here in the app until it becomes second nature. Like, you know, if you're hammering in a nail, you know, at first you do it slowly, and then after a while, you know, you can, you get better and you, at that skill. Now, you do need to have some knowledge. So for triangles... The main types of triangles are scalene, excuse my writing, isosceles, I'm going to call it isos for now, and equilateral. And when we, sometimes in a question in the section, we're asked to show that a triangle is one of these. And so I want to make sure that we have an idea of the tool that we would use for this. So for a scalene triangle, because all sides are a different length, the, the tool that I would be using most of the time would be the distance formula because a length of a side is a distance. And I would probably also be using it for the isosceles triangle. And I'd probably also be using it for equilateral triangle. Now, if I wanted to know if something is a right angle triangle, I have a problem because I can't show something's a right angle triangle if I just, well, I suppose I could if I used a different theorem, but what tool would I use to show a right angled uh, triangle? If you could put it in the chat for me, what tool would you think you would use? Gradient, yes. So remember we did distance, which was up here and the gradient formula which I suppose I should put these formulas down, although you've probably seen them before. The gradient formula, often you'll see me use M, is just going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Oh, I changed color. Um, or sometimes teachers say the change in Y over the change in X. And how would I use gradient to show um, that two, two lines or there was a 90 degree angle? Does anybody know about that bit of theory or, or tool? So normally what we say is we say, look, uh, nope. Okay, so then you must listen carefully here because this is such an important idea. If we have, let's say we have these two lines and I hope you're enjoying my colors. <laughs> so let's say that I want to show this is a right angle. Normally what we do is we say, we would call say this gradient number one, and we would call this line this gradient, gradient number two. If two lines are perpendicular to each other or at 90 degrees, you will see 
that when you multiply their gradients, if you feel like you, oh, sorry, too many colors. If you multiply the two gradients, you get negative one. So that's something that will come up later in the lesson today um, and is an important idea. And then the other thing I'm just gonna mention is that if two lines are parallel, sorry about the jumping screen. Does anybody know what it means if two lines are parallel? What do we know about their gradients? Okay, so the key idea is that if two lines are parallel, their gradients will be equal. Yes, Anam, that's perfect. Okay, I feel like our toolkit is pretty much ready to go. Let us go to some questions. So, uh, if you look, I've tried to make things a bit easier so there's not too much on the screen. Uh, and what I want you to do for me is I'm going to give you three questions now. So, let me, apologies for the moving around. This is a typical grade 10 end of year exam. You can see the mark allocation here. And what I want you to do is you are going to use the tools in your toolkit to simply answer this question. So I'm going to give you, uh, it's eight marks. So it's probably going to be close to five minutes. So let's just say 29 minutes past. And if you have questions, put them in the chat and I will respond with my voice. But really, um, let's see if we can use these uh, the tools in our toolkit efficiently, and then I'll go over it from there. And then there'll be a second part, which will deal more with quadrilaterals. Okay, I'll monitor the chat and I'll be a bit quiet so you can concentrate. If you have a question, please hit the chat. Okay, so the question is, so is the midpoint of B and so is the midpoint of B and D? Um, do you mean, so in the question, uh, so in fact, I can even read through the question. So it says ADCB is a kite. It says that AD is equal to DC. And that's why I've put my little green things on the kite. And AB equals... So let's go like this. AB is equal to BC. And in fact, I'm going to use a double thing here. AD is parallel to the X axis. The diagonals intersect. Aha. Okay. This is where, um, see clear, the knowledge of quadrilaterals becomes important. So I'm going to help you here. In a kite, we say that the long diagonal bisects or cuts the short diagonal in half. So you're quite correct. When you're trying to find P, which is this one over here, this is the midpoint of these, of A and C. Okay, so you're absolutely correct. And the reason I know that, Sikhle, is that I, the shape is a kite and it's a property of the kite. So that's why when you go back to the um, app to practice, you want to almost upload that to your toolkit to make the section a bit easier.
Sir, can you explain? Okay, perfect. Yeah. So in this, in fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this um, and I'm going to show you some of the tips that I've used from my experience. So all, what I always do when I start a question, you'll notice that I've colored some some stuff in is I introduce myself to the question. So I say, look, ABC is a kite and I use some colors to make it a bit, you know, what is a kite? It's a quadrilateral. And then this other information, I kind of just go through it and upload it to my brain. Now, question one says, show the coordinates of C are eight zero. So first I need to find where C is, which is down here, okay? When they say show that the coordinates are, all I need to do is give some evidence of why that is. Now, I want to suggest it's on the x-axis. And if it's on the x-axis, I know that the coordinates, so I would say something uh, the that the y-intercept or the, the y-coordinate is on the x-axis, therefore it has a coordinate of zero. Now, what is interesting or the uh, I see what you mean. Like it's a sort of a, almost, it's so simple. It's like, what are you doing for your marks? So basically all that you're going to do is you're going to get, you're going to say in the question, look, C is directly below D. Okay. What is uh, D's coordinates? Uh, we haven't got that yet. Or let's look at the question. It says that AD is five units. So I'm going to put that five over there. And if I know that the coordinate here is three, then I know that this one over here must be an eight. So what they're really trying to say, how do you show that? All that you're going to say is that in the question I'm given that AD is five. And so there, so we can say AD is five, which is given, therefore, D must have a coordinate of eight, zero. And then I would also put the fact that it's on the axis um, as, a, as a reason it's for zero. Now, 3.2.2, write down the coordinates of P. This question stems from the fact that it's a kite. And because it's a kite, we know that in fact, this over here, in fact, there's too many things on the actual, Thing at the moment, let's get rid of some of them. We know, and we've just worked out what D is, so we can keep that on the. Oh, sorry, I, I that was C. C is eight zero. So, if we want to find what the coordinates of P are, we simply need to find the midpoint of these two things. So, should we leave the uh, answer insert for most coordinates. Uh, either of them are, oh wait, it says here coordinates of that. Write down the coordinates, leave it in coordinate form. Um, and coordinate form can be insert or normal form. That's fine. Okay, so write down the coordinates of P. So at the moment, all I want to do is take three, five, and then also take the point eight, zero, and find their midpoint. And how do I do that? I go three plus eight over two, and then I go five plus zero over two. And so then what I should have is I should have 11 over two, and then I should have five over two. Did everybody get that? Okay. Then for the next two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the answers from where I had them before, just to save us a bit of time. I think I wrote them down over here. There we go. And I'm just going to copy them across. Uh, so if you just give me a moment. So draw, lasso select. I'll bring that across. Sorry if you're getting dizzy here. <laughs> and we'll bring that in. I think there's a bit too much going on. So basically for the next one, you should have got one, 
uh, for the gradient and then for the length of AC, uh, I'll just grab that quickly. Where did I put it? In fact, um, is it up here? Oh, okay. You know what? I'm going to leave that for now. Sorry, guys. I'm getting a bit confused by all my, all the stuff going on. Uh, I will just do it with you. So did everyone get one for your BD, for your gradient? Okay. And then the length of AC, all I need to do for the length of AC is I just need to use the distance formula. And so I'm going to, okay, essentially that, I'll just write it over here. In order to get, so uh, AC equals the square root. And I said before, whenever I use the distance formula, I always use the structure because I know it's always the same. And then what are the two points that I'm using for A and C? Uh, A, I know already, it's going to be the point three, five. And C, I got earlier on, was the point eight zero. So if I'm trying to find what AC is, I'm just going to say, well, what is eight minus three? It's going to be five. And what is zero minus five? It's going to be minus five. And then when I do this, I'm going to get 25, 25, and then I'm going to get square root 50. And that's it. Did you all get that? Five. Um, if it's in in um, decimal, it will be seven point uh, something around that area, but it should be square root 50. And then the last question is just to find, you understand. Okay. I'm not actually going to do the last question in full right now because I want to move on to another one, but I just want the idea. How would we solve it if we were to do it now? It says calculate the area of the kite. And this is the kite in the question. And I admittedly, it looks a bit like a crime scene now, but can anybody give me an idea? What would be the logic or the skills we would use to do, find the area of a kite? Does anybody know any ideas or any... Um, How would you find the area of a kite? So we've given a kite on the screen. What tools do you have? And if you don't have tools, just say in the chat, I don't have that in my toolkit yet. Or, you know. Okay, so what I'm gonna suggest is again, one of the things that you realize with a kite is that a kite is made up of two triangles. And so one of the ways of finding the area of the shape is simply going to be, you worked out what the length of BD was. So you do the triangles first, yes. And so you already know what BD is. BD is the length uh, that you calculated Oh, wait, sorry, you would have to calculate the length of BD. We haven't done it yet, but you can, you can use that. And then you have calculated the length of AC. Now, you also know that this cuts this in half. So whatever the length for AC that you got, this and this is just going to be half the length. All you need is a formula for finding the area of a triangle. What would be the formula for finding the area of a triangle? Ah, half base times height. Or I see, C. Claire, you have another formula, which is correct. If you know the formula for the area of a kite, it's just a half diagonal one times diagonal two, where the diagonal is the green one there. You work out its distance and you work out the distance of the red one and you times it by a half. All that is doing is all the maths it, at one time um, together. 
Okay. Now I'm just going to give you the answer for that because I have worked it out before the lesson. Have I? Let's have a look. Oh, I haven't actually there. So I'm going to leave that for now, but it's mainly the logic that we are, are looking for. Okay. Now I'm going to give you this question and I want to see how this goes based on earlier in the lesson. Show that the following triangle is an isosceles triangle. I'm going to give you uh, three minutes to try and prove to me that some triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle using your toolkit. Okay, go for it. And then we'll have a discussion after that. For those who are struggling, I think a good tool to use would be the distance formula. How are you going to use that distance formula to help you answer this question? What do we need to know to know something's an isosceles triangle? Two sides are equal. Yes, Nazole, absolutely. So how are we going to show that two sides are equal? What tool should we use? Yo. <laughs> okay, so here's the tool. The tool is going to be because we're dealing with distances, we're going to use the distance formula. So what I do to help me when I do these questions is I say, look, I know I need to find out how long each triangle is. So, and I know that they all have the same structure. They have the structure, oh, two equal signs, sorry. They have this structure whereby essentially I have that. And then I'm also going to have this. And I need to know actually the length of sides for all three of them. And so this is not hard work. This is me just being a good you know, carpenter because I know the structure will be the same. Okay, I'll give you a little bit more time to see if you can figure out the rest, but that's what I would start with. That would be my structural stuff. Can you figure out the next step? So all I do is I say, look, I want to talk about AB. So for AB, I know that the change in X or the difference in X is going to be three minus one, which is two. And then I'm also going to go for the Y six minus one, which is five. So that's that, but done. Then for BC, uh, BC is the other one. So I must make sure six minus three is three. And then three minus six is minus three. Now, if I'm probably confusing you because there's too much, so let me just take that away. Six, I'm gonna make a silly mistake too, hey. I'm definitely doing BC and then I'm going six minus three, which is three. And that's why there's a three here. And then I'm going here, three minus six is minus three. Then the last one that I need to know about is going to be AC. Now, AC is this one. So six minus one is five. And then three minus one is two. Okay, now I need to deal with my square roots. And so I'm going to do some neatening up. Two squared is four. 
uh, and five squared is 25. So I can even do that. Over here, I've got nine plus nine. So, so far, it's not isosceles. And then the last one, it's 25 plus four. Okay, good news. Looks like we're on the right track. So this is square root 29. This is square root 18. And this is square root 29. So we know that in fact, AB and AC are the same length. So AB equals AC because they both equal square root 29. So therefore, triangle ABC is isosceles. Okay, and that's a very, very common question. Are there any comments before I move on? Let's try and squeeze in one more question. Okay, I want you, I'm gonna set this up for you a little bit and then I'm gonna let you do it for the last question of the day. So I'm given, this is a typical exam question and students do find it overwhelming because of the sort of clutter factor. And so what I would do is just get to know the question. So C is a point on the Y axis. There is C down there. These are points, except C is not actually given to you, but you see it's on the axis there. They are vertices of a parallelogram. So this thing over here is a parallelogram. Okay. And K is another point that they give you. And L is a point on AB such that KL is perpendicular to CB. Okay, so that's a lot of words, especially if English isn't your first language. But the good news is the first question only asks you to do use your tools. So please find for me the length of the diagonal DB, which is that one, the coordinates of M, the midpoint of DB, and the gradient of AD. If you could do that for me now, and let's see how, how well you can use your tools. Uh, can I go back to the answer? Uh, I can go back to the answer for a second. Um, let me uh, let's have a look. So here was the answer. It was square root 29 with the two lengths. And sometimes students, worry about whether or not you do it the right way around. But because things are being squared, as long as you're consistent, it doesn't actually matter. So you should have got that. Square root 29, square root 29 are the two sides, and therefore it's isosceles. Okay. So I'll let you try and do that. Tuna, how are we doing for time in terms of the end of the lesson and stuff that you want to do? I don't have any pencils because my pencils are not working. No, I don't have any pencils. Sorry. No problem. Oh. <laughs> it's quite nice to hear that. Hmm? Hmm? I need another pencil. Is there, is there a question? I don't have a pencil. I only have pens. Ah, okay. All right. So I'm going to do these with you now. And basically, again, the most important thing is I must use the correct points. So to get DB, to get a length, whenever you see the length, that tool means the distance formula. So if I look at the point 
D and B, it doesn't matter which one we start with as long as we're consistent. So if I look at the X coordinate, minus four, minus four is just going to be minus eight. And then two minus minus four. Now this is sneaky. What is two minus minus four? Put that in the chat for me. Because this is where I know students get a bit caught out. So two minus minus four is actually two plus four, which is going to be six. Yes, Nizoli, yes. So now if I'm going to work out the distance, that's going to be 64 and six squared is 36, which means it's square root 100, which is 10. To find the midpoint of this DB, I obviously need to know the midpoint formula well. Now, if you don't know it well, okay, obviously you just obviously practice it in the app until it becomes part of your memory. But let's just, from what I remember the distance formula, I simply add the two X coordinates together. So minus four plus four over two, and then two plus Minus four over two. Ask me how beautiful a pencil. Which gives me zero. I and then it. two minus four is minus two over two is minus one. And so the coordinate should be naught minus one. And then the last of our tools in our toolkit is the gradient formula. Now the gradient formula. Again, it's just the change in Y over the change in X. And so what I would suggest is that you get used to the structure of how to do this. So first of all, locate your points. The points involved are A and D. Now, when I'm calculating the gradient, if I know the top line is the change in Y, I always tend to do that first. So four minus two is going to be two. And then I'm going to go, for the second one, for the X, the change in X, zero minus minus four. Now zero minus minus four is actually plus four, which means the gradient is a half. Okay, so this is what we would call the uh, routine procedures questions. Now let's see, and I'll leave this up. If I bring another question up from the bottom, how would you do on this one? And you may recognize this from earlier in the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see. For the last question of today, can you prove from this question that uh, AD is parallel? So AD is parallel to AB. And you can you give a reason why ABCD is a parallelogram? And again, look at the mark allocation. It's only one mark. I will give you two minutes to give that a go. And then we'll wrap up for today. So the one really important tool that you need to bear in mind is what, how, what logic, what reason are we going to use in order to prove something is perpendicular? And I spoke about it earlier in the lesson. If two lines are perpendicular or 90 degrees, when you multiply their gradients, you get minus one. 
Now, at the moment, we only have one of the gradients. The gradient of AD, we know what it is because we worked it out earlier in the lesson. We know the gradient here is a half. Now, what we don't know is the gradient over here. But if we worked it out, then we could check if we multiply them together what we get. So I'm going to work out the gradient with you now. So for, and often it's helpful to put the thing that you're working with. So if I'm working with AB, I put that at the bottom. M is the symbol for gradient. So now I'm going to go. Uh, now make sure with gradient, you always do the Y's first. So you go four minus minus four. And then for the X, you're going to go zero minus four, which then gives us eight over minus four, which gives us minus two. Now, at least I have two gradients to play with. But the question is, what do I get if I multiply them together? So if I take a half and I multiply it by minus two, I could use my calculator and encourage you to do, but another thing that's helpful is to put it over one. And what you then notice is that actually these twos would cancel and you get minus one. So therefore we can say AD is parallel to, sorry, parallel, perpendicular to that because um, the gradient of a, uh, AD times the gradient of AB equals minus one, which is what we discussed earlier in the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to end off the lesson now. I just want to give you some advice. I know from having taught this section many times before, you have to build a certain amount of base knowledge in your toolkit. Then when you go and do more complicated questions, you then need to figure out which tool that you know how to use goes with that question. And then it's a matter of just applying it. So, but initially I would concentrate on just your procedural skills, getting them up to a certain level. And you can do that by going to the app. And then you can get to a question like, um, like 3.6 or 3.7, where you say, determine the equation of um, a line or find the coordinates um, which builds on this. Okay, so thank you very much for listening today. I hope that it's been beneficial. And I know it's always a bit different when a teacher um, jumps in and you, you kind of need time to get to know them. Um, but yeah, I think I've tried to give some of the knowledge that I've acquired of my career. And uh, goodbye to you all. And I think I will see you at some point. Uh, but if, yeah. So over to you, Tula. Mm. Yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. S. Um, hello, hello, great tens. I'm sorry, Nizole, we are out of time. Um, I see Nizole is asking a question. Do you want to maybe, because we have four yeah. minutes left, is it something you Perfect. can fit into four minutes? Totally. Let's do some okay. Q&A. So I'm just going to bring up another page. So when we talk about collinear, and that was from, collinear just means that points are on the same line. So these three points are collinear, whereas if I had to say have this, those three green points are not collinear because they're not on the same line. Now, if you want to check if these three points are collinear, a good way to think about it is just to think about points. So let's go. If you want to find on the collinear one, if you find the gradient between A and B and B and C, it's going to be the same because they're on the same line. Whereas when three points are not collinear, if you find the gradient between D and E and you find the gradient between E and F, they will be different. And so the, the tool I would be using would be the gradient formula. And then the logic I would use would be this drawing that collinear means on the same straight line. Does that make sense, Nizolo? Any other Q&A questions that we can? Are there any nasty, like any words or things you've seen in class that you would, um, maybe that you could, you know, like vertices or diagonals bisecting, et cetera? Hmm. 
Um, All right. Doesn't well, seem to have questions. We've got two minutes left. Goodbye to everyone. I, I'm sure I haven't actually, it's so weird. I haven't seen your faces, which I suppose is part of the online thing and protection. Yeah, sometimes we do ask them at the end when we do, because sometimes we have a leaderboard where we kind of show, but we do it oh, once a week. Attitude we change change. Um, um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but great tens. Remember, we do not have classes um, next week. So, you guys get to have a bit of a break. I suggest you taking, um, use that time in addition to just resting. Use that time to just go over your notes, your lessons that we've had. For those of you who are new to the lessons, remember that all these have been recorded and you can go to watobi.co.za and you can be able to access all the recordings from previous classes. So if you feel like you have any gaps um, in these lessons in your knowledge, you can go back and catch up. I would also highly suggest using the app. The app, the Watobi app is a very strong tool for you to use um, to practice everything that you learned today everything that you've learned in the previous lessons, there's something that corresponds to it um, on, the, on the app. And we've shown you guys over the last few weeks as well. It's also going to show on the recorded lessons. So just go back and make sure you check that out. Make sure you also get a bit of rest. Uh, we will see you on the 11th. Um, I think we are doing geometry uh, on the 11th, but we'll confirm that with you. Um, so, Goodbye, great tense. Uh, it's been a great term with you guys. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next term, which is basically in a little over a week. So bye, bye, Riabete. Just run. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Cheers, everyone watching on the live stream. Uh, we're gonna stop streaming now. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you on the eleventh of October. <laughs>